Let's go! It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Chapter 4, lesson number 10. So we're still on second order differential equations. We're looking at non-homogeneous differential equations. And this time we're moving on to look at the particular solution. So the first 11 examples are in the previous videos. We're moving on to example 12. So find the particular solution of the second order differential equation d2y by dx squared minus 4dy by dx plus 4y equals e to the power of x. This time though we're given this additional information. We can find the constants and we can get the particular solution because we're told that x is 0, y is 2 and dy by dx equals 1. So the first thing we do to solve this equation, help me out, what do we need? Perfect, you need the complementary function. Remember for that you get your auxiliary equation, take the coefficients of d2y by dx squared, dy by dx and y. So we've got 1 d2y by dx squared, so that's 1k squared, minus 4 dy by dx would be minus 4k, and plus 4y is plus 4. And that equals zero. To solve that, you know, you would factorize. If you factorize that, you get k minus two make k minus two. It is a repeated root, k equals two. So you'd say that the roots are real and equal. What do you do when the roots are real and equal? Well, you think back to this funky wee table and you think if there is a repeated root, your general solution is of the form ax plus b in brackets times e to the power of px. Here, in this case, p is two. So you can say then that the complementary function will be y equals ax plus b e to the power of 2x. What we need now though is the particular integral because you don't have this equation equal to 0, it's equal to e to the power of x. So your particular integral you want something of that form because we have e to the power of 1x. Well you're going to let y equal p e to the power of x since f of x is of that form. So let's differentiate. We know what y is, we're saying it's pe to the power of x, but we also need to find dy by dx and d2y by dx squared. So let's differentiate. If you differentiate, dy by dx will be equal to Callum. Perfect. P, just treat that as a number so it will stay as it is. If you differentiate e to the power of x, it stays as e to the power of x. You do have to multiply by the derivative of the index, but if you differentiate x, you just get 1. So you times that by 1, so it just stays. D2y by dx squared, if you differentiate that, well, differentiating p e to the power of x, we've just done that, and it stayed as p e to the power of x. So we now know d2y by dx squared, dy by dx and y, so we can sub them into this equation up here. So doing that, d2y by dx squared was p e to the power of x. We're taking away four times dy by dx was also 4e to the power of x. And we're adding on four times p e to the power of x. That equals e to the power of x. From there, to simplify this side, so really 1pe to the power of x, take away 4pe to the power of x, plus another 4pe to the power of x. Well, it's just going to leave us with pe to the power of x equals e to the power of x. We need to find this value of p, so to do that, we can equate the coefficients of e to the power of x. Because both sides are the same, the number of e to the power of x is on the left is equal to the number of e to the power of x is on the right. So here, the number we have is p, and on this side, the number we have is 1. So you know p must equal 1. That means then the particular integral, y equals p to the power of x, we have found what p is. p is just 1, so the particular integral is y equals e to the power of x. How do you get the general solution? What do you do? Well, remember your general solution is the sum of the complementary function and the particular integral, which means then that the general solution equals that there was our complementary function and we're adding on this particular integral. So that there is the general solution. Woo! That's what we were really doing in the last lesson, but now we have this additional information. We are told that when x is zero, y is two, and dy by dx equals one, which means we can find these constants a and b to get the particular solution. So the first thing, when x is 0, y is 2, so we can go up here and we can replace x with 0 and y with 2. So let's do that. That will give us 2 equals a times 0, because we're replacing x with 0, plus b, times e to the power of 2 times 0, plus e to the power of 0. 
Work that out. Well, a times zero is going to be zero, so we're just left with b in the brackets. But we're timesing that by e to the power of, that'll be zero. Anything to the power of zero is one, so it just leaves us with b. And we're adding on, again, anything to the power of zero is one, so it just becomes b at one. Meaning then, that b is also just one. We need to find the value of a as well, and if you look at this additional information, we're told x is 0 and y is 2, and we're also told dy by dx. So, with me, we're going to have to differentiate the general solution, and that way we can then replace dy by dx with 1 and x with 0. So let's differentiate. How would you differentiate that? What would you have to do? Anybody help me out? Perfect. You would have to use the product rule because you've got one function in terms of x times another function in terms of x. You could also multiply the brackets and then differentiate, but you're still going to have to use the product rule. Makes no difference how you do it. You will still get the same answer. So let's go for u and v. u, in this case, I'm going to let equal ax plus b and v equals e to the power of 2x. If I differentiate ax plus b, well that just becomes a, and if I differentiate e to the power of 2x, it stays as e to the power of 2x, but remember to multiply by the derivative of the index, which is 2. Well done. From there, you can have dy by dx equals u dash v plus u v dash will give you that. From there, look back to that information. We were told that when x was 0, dy by dx equals 1, which means we're replacing dy by dx with 1, and we're replacing all the x's with 0. If we do that, that is what we will end up with. Tidy that up slightly, so you'd have a times 2, a times e to the power of 2 times 0, which is just going to be a times 1. We're going to be adding on 2 times. That disappears, leaving us with 2 times b, or times that by 1 again, so it's just 2b. And this here, e to the power of 0, would just be 1. If you replace b with 1, because we found that out just in the last page, it will let us find this value of a. And a works out to be negative 2. The particular solution then, we can say, because we know a is negative 2, we go to the general solution, which is just up here, replace a with negative 2, so we get negative 2 times x, plus, and b was equal to 1, so it becomes 1, and times that by e to the power of 2x, plus e to the power of x. If you want this bit in the brackets, you could rewrite that, but you don't have to. Either would be fine for your answer. Woo! Example 13, find the particular solution of the second order differential equation d2y by dx squared plus 2dy by dx plus 2y equals sine x, given that when x is 0, y is 2, and dy by dx equals 0. So how do we start this one off? What do we do, Ms. Amel? Perfect, you need the complementary function. So look at the coefficients of d2y by dx squared, dy by dx, and y. Meaning then, your auxiliary equation will be k squared plus 2k plus 2 equals 0. And if you solve that, well, let's factorise it. What would you get, Ms. Amel? Exactly. You can't factorise it. And if you can't factorise it, you have to use your quadratic formula. There's the quadratic formula. Take the coefficients of k squared k and your number here. They will be the values of a, b, and c. Sub them into your quadratic formula. will give us negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, 2 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 2, over 2 times 1. That works out to be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2. The square root of negative 4, remember you can split that up. So it's the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. Square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 1 we call i. So, that means you'd have negative 2 plus or minus 2i over 2. From there, if you divide the negative 2 by 2, you will get negative 1. And if you divide 2i by 2, you get 1. So you'd have negative 1 plus or minus i. That means the roots are complex conjugates. And if the roots are complex conjugates, woo! Look at this. It means your general solution, or in this case, the complementary function, will be y equals... Well, what would we have here? Because we've got negative 1, it'll be e to the power of negative 1, x. And there are imaginary parts. We've got 1i, which means we'd have a sine 1x plus b cos 1x. So we would just have that. That there is the complementary function. After the complementary function, we need to think about the particular integral because this here does not equal 0. 
So when it doesn't equal zero, get the particular integral, you want the particular integral to be of this form. We're needing something sine x. But remember, this is really sine x plus zero cos x. So for the particular integral, let's go with p sine x plus q cos x. We need to differentiate. So if we differentiate, we will end up with dy by dx, and that would equal differentiate p sine x, you get p cos x. Differentiate q cos x, you'd get negative q sine x. So we know dy by dx. We also need to do 2y by dx squared. So let's differentiate again. p cos x goes to negative p sine x, and negative q sine x would go to negative q cos x. So we have just found y dy by dx and d2y by dx squared. So we can sub them into this original equation that we started with. So subbing them in, we would end up with d2y by dx squared, that's negative p sine x minus q cos x, so that's what we'd have, plus two times what we have for dy by dx, plus two times y, and y was this p sine x plus q cos x, and set that equal to sine x. Let's get rid of the brackets there, let's multiply them out, and from here we need to find these values of p and q. Do you remember how to find p and q, Malika? What do you do? Perfect. Very good. You can equate the coefficients. Let's equate the coefficients of sine x. So we're looking at the terms with a sine x. So here is a sine x term, here is a sine x term, and here is a sine x term. On the other side, well, that's the only sine x term. So take the coefficients. We've got negative p. We also have negative 2q, and we've got plus 2p. That is how many sine x's we have. And on this side, we've just got one sine x. So we can set them equal. We've got negative p plus 2p, which gives us 1p. So let's simplify that. So we get negative 2q plus p plus 1. And we can't do much else with that. What do we do next? You got it. You want to take the coefficients of cos x. So here, cos x, cos x, another cos x. And really, you've got 0 cos x over here. So if you equate the coefficients, you have, we've got negative q, We've got a plus 2p, and we've got a plus 2q. And that would equal, because there's zero cos x's over here, you know that negative q plus 2p plus 2q must equal zero. Again, if you look at it, you've got negative q plus 2q, which is just 1q. So simplify. How do you solve that? What do you do next, Max? Brilliant. You are perfectly right. You have simultaneous equations that you want to solve. If you go back hundreds of years solving your simultaneous equations, you've been doing that to death, then you know you would get q to be negative two fifths and p to be one fifth. Because you have these values of p and q, this was your particular integral just up here, p sine x plus q cos x. We have found these values of p and q, meaning then that p sine x will become one fifth sine x. And q cos x will become negative two fifths cos x x. So that there is the particular integral. How do you find the general solution? What is it that you add together? Perfect. You want to add the complementary function to the particular integral and that there will be your general solution. So the general solution will be equal to that. This here is the complementary function. This here is your, comp is your particular integral. What we need to do now, though, this is the particular solution that we are wanting to find. So we look at the additional information. We were told that when x is 0, y is 0, and dy by dx equals 0. So let's replace x with 0 and y with 0. Going up here then, replacing them, we will end up with 0 equals e to the power of negative 0, which is 0, times by a sine 0 plus b cos 0 plus a fifth sine 0, take away 2 fifths cos 0. If you work that out, you get something that's nice and simple. e to the power of 0 just becomes 1. a sine 0, well, sine of 0 is just 0, so we, that would cancel out the a term. And cos of 0 is 1, so we'd have b. So we're left with b times 1, which is just b. Sine of 0 again is 0, so it's a fifth times 0, which will cancel out. And cos of 0 is 1. So we'd have negative 2 fifths times 1, which is just negative 2 fifths. That means then the value of b is two fifths. We also want to find the value of a though, so we have to look at the other information we are given. We're told that when x is zero, dy by dx equals zero. 
So, to get dy by dx, we have to differentiate. If we differentiate this, what would we have to use? Perfect, we have to use the product rule, and we use that because we've got one term in terms of x, another function in terms of x, so we're going to use the product rule. Let u equal e to the power of negative x. If you differentiate e to the power of negative x, it stays as e to the power of negative x, but multiplied by the derivative gives you negative e to the power of negative x. And v will equal a sin x plus b cos x. Differentiate a sin x, you get a cos x. And differentiate b cos x, you get negative b sin x. Therefore, dy by dx equals u dash v plus u v dash. And we're also differentiating these terms as well. So we'd have a plus one fifth sign changes to cos. So we have cos x and negative two fifths cos x would change to positive two fifths sign x. We can now sub in that information. We were told that when x is zero, dy by dx also equals zero. So we're replacing dy by dx with zero and we're replacing x with zero. If you do that once again, you get something that's nice and simple because the sine of zero is zero, so that's going to eliminate this term. Cos of zero is one, so it's one times b times by negative e to the power of zero. Well, e to the power of zero is just one, but you're times that by negative, so it'd be negative one times b. Here, same thing, you've got sine of zero, so it eliminates the b term. Cos of zero is one, so one times a is a, and e to the power of zero is just one, so that just leaves us with a. A fifth time, cos of zero, cos of zero is one, so it's just a fifth, and sine of zero is zero, so that eliminates this term here. So we end up with that. We know b is two fifths, so we can replace b with two fifths, so we get negative one times two fifths, plus a plus one fifth, meaning a works out to be one fifth if you rearrange that. The particular solution, then your answer, you're going back to this general solution and you're replacing the values of a and b. Remember, b worked out to be two fifths and a worked out to be one fifth, so you're replacing them. And that there is your answer. Try the questions in the unit one booklet. You're on page 102. Check your answers as you go. This is pretty much as hard as it gets for second order differential equations. Best of luck. Have fun. Bye. Woo!